breaking news. Your friends in the house, make on I hear this important and very, very obonga revelation where they two important part and two very important and delicate for every beer France in the house. Make on I hear it and I quote Kano's lawyer, a lawyer Jimako, who have just uh, been banned from going to the DSS to see Mazen Nam the Kano, have come out with a very obonga revelation that when your ear hear it, my dear brothers, you will you, that is your ear will tingle. Hear him well. Mazen Nam the Kano's lawyer reveals three countries involved in IPOP leaders arrest and detention this thing according to the news i got this morning uh, very early this morning they said this thing they have planned it years back two three four five good years that is when they start to plan all these things concocting uh, how they can uh, get massive name the canals arrest because in uk where he's doing the the radio broadcast the uk is, is what is totally against biafra they totally against anything that will liberate uh, Biafra from the contraction called Nigeria. So that is why they have been involved in the plans to do what? To arrest and detain Mazen Nam the Kano. Because you cannot tell me, UK as a whole country, as a strong country they are, cannot protect a UK passport holder, which is automatically he has become the indigenous of that very country by law. So... That is why we need to stop accusing our own fellow brothers, our own fellow Biafrans, how they are concocted to sell off Mazin Nam Dekano, wanting, wanting. No. The people that behind Mazin Nam Dekano's uh, arrest and detention is from the country where he took, we took off, where he landed, and the people who came there to got him arrested. This country combined together and planned for this arrest and detention. So my wonderful people, please, uh, before we go into the main priorities, I want you to make this video, let it go viral. If you are a Biafran and you didn't share this video, uh, that means you are not a true Biafran. You are not a Biafran soldier. Every Biafran soldier, lovers of freedom and lovers of mankind and lovers of the freedom supposed to share this video, let people know those who are behind the detention and arrest of Mazen Nam Dekano. Do this and do what? And you will receive your reward when Biafra finally comes. Because this one, every news and crannies of the Biafra, both home and the diaspora, need to get idea of this. So that they will know how to dodge all these countries. Either you are traveling or you are living there or you are planning to go there. Or you are living in that very country, my dear. Here, sir, and I know. That's what it will take me. I beg, make on a subscribe, like, share, and also comment all the very, very important part. Let us go straight to the reason why we are here this Monday morning. The legal representative of Mazen Nam the Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo, Aloy Ejimako, alleges that three nations, Kenya, Britain, and Nigeria, played a vital role in Kano's arrest and detention. Ejimako took to his Twitter on Sunday to discuss these allegations. He suggested that Kenya, which will be showing remorse, could have demanded Kano's return to Kenya if they really not end to that plan to, uh, to, 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 to hijack and abduct that young man in their own country. That is one of the reasons. The number two, he criticized the United Kingdom for failing to protect Kano, a British passport holder. If they are not among this by now, this one, this month completed, complete 24 months. That is two years, Martin Nam Dekano have been heard beyond his human rights and how they abuse his human rights, both in the uh, in UK, in Kenya, and also in Nigeria. Despite appeals to former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's British government, little progress was made in securing Kano's uh, release. The lawyer also faulted Nigeria for not adhering to its own laws. The IPOP's leader's detention has continued despite the appeal court in Abuja dismissing the terrorism charges against him on October 13th of 2022. Reflecting on the situation, Ejimako said, Mazen Nam de Kano would have been freed if Kenya showed contrition by demanding his return to Kenya if Britain protected him like they protected Umaru Diko in 1984. And if Nigeria decides to obey their own law, Martin Nam de Kano since October 13th last year, 2022, would have been a free man by now. 
and uh, the other news we have in our hands is security experts. They proffer solutions as what? As bandits murdered over 160 Nigerians in one week. Make on a calculator from uh, May 29th to today. Had he completed two weeks, today happens to be the 12th day of the month of uh, uh, June 2023. We did a handover on the 29th of May 2023. Maybe probably let's say 13 good days now. It's not yet two weeks. 160 Nigerians have been murdered in this new administration. Full scarcity in this new administration. Inflation don't start to the rise in this new administration. The exchange rate is nowhere to be found in this new administration. Forest market, I be forest uh, whatever whatever. Shares and the rest of them, <laughs> my dear, far corner funala in this new administration. And somebody is out there listening the achievement of the this current uh, administration under how many days? He said, he said under eight days. And I begin to wonder, what are those achievements? They couldn't mention it. They said you have achieved something. Achieve something, they are uh, you arrested the MFLA and leave the main actors where they behind whatever the MFLA committed being a CBN governor. Nigeria and the administration and their shenanigans. My uh, <laughs> my greeting to you all who on our way down day one, eh? Our family now, if not my friends, have been news. <laughs> On our way down. For 12 good years, insecurity, insecurity have been the bane of Nigeria since the symbolic or symbolic bombing of the police headquarters in June of 2011 and the United Building a few weeks later by Boko Haram insurgents. The problem has uh, degenerated into an existential threat that has swept across the Northeast, turning the region into killing fields and displacing millions of people. Despite the government's effort to curb the problem, there has not been a, a, a recipe as a, the or as a other non-state actors such as Ishwap, killer headsmen, courtes, unknown government, and bandits join the fray, unleashing the bloodletting on the country. As of today, no part of the country is safe from kidnapping and no day will pass without the sad news of killing. The Southeast region, which has previously enjoyed relative security, is ravaged by the so-called unknown government that continually unleash mayhem radically across the five eastern states. There is no further evidence that Nigeria is at war with itself than the disturbing fact that various military operations are going on across the country. Failure to term the insecurity has become an albatross hanging on the necks of the successive governments. In retrospect, it was what led to the electoral defeat of Pre uh, President jo uh, Goodlord Jonathan, whose opponent, Mahmoud Buhari, campaigned vigorously on ending the insecurity siege. After the eight years, Instead of the insecurity to end, it became worse, not worse, it became worse under uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari's regime. Sadly, as he bowed out of office on May 29, 2023, life turned full circle, and Buhari's biggest failure was still insecurity, despite spending over 5 trillion naira on defense. What that money is being meant for? Who is held accountable for this money? And how is it being spent? Who can give account of it? None. All our commanders, both the one that the salary is one million naira, all of them now have have what they call a, a choice houses in Abuja, not given to them by government, but they buy it on their own or build, they build it on their own. And they have choice houses outside Nigeria and so many other businesses. And the 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 the, the, the law refused to take its full cost because. They are the power that be. Suddenly, okay, sorry. The day he handed over the reins of power and returned to his hometown of Daura, the country was not any safer than it was eight years ago. Therefore, the biggest expectation of Nigerians from the new administration of Bola Ahmed Tunumbu is the assurance of safety and security for the citizenry. However, the first 12 days of the new government were 
we are fret with the same old problem of insecurity, with not less than 170 Nigerians killed in virus attacks and more than 160 kidnapped already. At least 50 people died in Sokoto, 49 in Zamfara, 40 in Benue, 17 in Rivers, 6 in Kasena, 3 in Plateau, 2 each, 2 each in Kaduna, Ogun, Delta, and Oyo, while Ondo and Lagos State recorded one death each. Some of the worst killings were recorded in Zamfara State, where over 31 villagers were slain in Jambako and Sakida villages of Maradun local government area on June 3 by armed men suspected to be bandits and terrorists. Benue also recorded heavy casualties on the same day when over 25 people were reportedly killed in an attack by unknown gunmen or Fulani killers. At Imande, Mbakanji, and other neighboring communities in Mbacha, Council Ward of Castina, Ala, local government area. Sokoto State was also among the worst hit states of the week, with 50 people reported killed in one cold blood across two local governments by gunmen suspected to be bandits. The spate of killings has become worrisome for Nigerians, leading to pasmasibin that uh, the problem uh, will not end anytime soon. Speaking with the Daily Post, the president of the Ego Crime Awareness Prevention Initiative, Samuel Eniola Adam, said the solution to the problem requires that citizens work in concert with the government to fight crimes. How? Tell us now. Whether citizens they need to carry knife and matches and begin to pursue criminals or what? Please make it specific. Uh, specific. He ascribed the failure to cause the problem thus far to the lack of credible intelligence, which in turn he avoid is due to the poor relationship between Nigerians and the law enforcement agencies because they keep on treating the people who are supposed to give them insight bad. Then tell me, how are they going to do that? It's only in Nigeria you will went to a police station to report a case. You will be the reporter will turn out to be the, even the person uh, that, that they will accuse later on that you are the one that perpetrated the crime. That is Nigeria. Nigeria is the person you went to report for a crime. They will first of all handcuff you, put you inside that room, even before you claim to be innocent. <clears throat> According to him, security is everybody's business. What is the strength of the law enforcement agencies in Nigeria? We can't put the blame entirely on security agents. We have to be part of the security. Ourselves and our families have to be part of the security. Common crime in our society is a collective job. Many people fail to have a good understanding of law enforcement. And this is why we are having challenges all over and over again. He avowed that the security operators are not magicians, certain that we in the society know these bad guys, but we compromise with the criminals all because we are scared of being arrested if we report crimes to law enforcement agencies. Not afraid they used to do it. Or even when you reported a crime or a suspect to them, they will call the suspect and call your name, thereby putting your life and the life of your families and the, your loved ones in danger. So tell me, how are they going to do that? Because if all these criminals go to their office, they will bribe them with a very huge amount of money and they will reveal the secret to them. That is why nobody is going to the police or military or whatever to go and do what? And uh, blow a whistle. In further, uh, he said further, we don't have good rep uh, rapport with the security agents. I'm calling on Nigerians to be open to security operatives. You and your family members should be close to law enforcement. And then, we will have a very peaceful society. If you ask those residents what their DPO's number is, they cannot provide it. They don't have contact with the police commissioner. This is where we are having issues. It is not about the law enforcement agencies. The question there is, how many commissioners of police can come out and bring their private numbers, if not their secretaries? And most of times, when you call them, they will tell you, Oga is busy. <laughs> Maybe Oga is doing one thing or the other, or doing a megrimon inside office. And the secretary or the PA will tell you, Oga is busy. And uh, even when you drop your comment, when Oga finishes his business, they will not report what you said today, Oga. That is it. Uh, security commits Ben Okeze in his contribution. Uh, this means the insinuations that the, the recent spate of killings across the country was orchestrated to frustrate the current administration. 
It is the same attack that has been going on. Nothing is new, he affirmed. According to OKC, President Bola Metunumbu needs to rejig the security system and I think that is what he is already doing because he has already called the security chiefs and told them what he expects to see soon. I believe he is currently watching their performance before making some changes to bring in more vibrant and capable people that can handle the situation. He, on the other hand, argued that Corbyn the menace is in the hands of security agencies. I have always been advocating that whenever attacks happen, hold the security chief in that jurisdiction responsible. For instance, if there is an attack in Kubwa, the government should go straight to those in charge of the security in that area. The security personnel in, that, in charge of uh, that area should know when bad people are coming in and what is going in that immediate community. They should be held responsible for any incident, he stated. OKZ expatiated further. For instance, when you hold a commissioner of police responsible for an attack, he will also hold the area commander responsible and he will in turn also hold the DPO responsible in that particular area. By the time you are not satisfied with their efforts, you can sack them. By doing that, you will see that many of them will sit up. But in a situation where you are not pushing anybody, despite whatever attack that occurs, people will keep dying. In the meantime, Nigerians have been watching every move of the new president and many are optimistic that he will solve the problem of insecurity. In his inauguration speech, the president declared that security shall be a top priority of our administration. Another encouraging gesture from him was his recent meeting with the security chiefs, during which he tasked them uh, with coming up with a new template for the country's security architecture. Many, however, believe he has not matched a, a, a hat trick uh, with action because of his failure to appoint the National Security Advisor, which they believe should be among his first few appointments. Presently, there are speculations that former Chairman of the Economic and Financial Grants Commission, EFCC, Nuhuri Bado, is favored for the position, but Nigerians from all walks of life have fought it, with various theories advanced as to why he will be a square peg in a round, in a round table. While most Nigerians are not mentioning names, they prefer the president to appoint someone with a military background who could bring experience and required acumen to coordinate the fight against insecurity and put an end to the nightmare. Other names being mentioned as candidates for the um, uh, National Security uh, uh, Advisor eh, include the retired generals Abdurrahman Dambazu, a former Minister of Interior, and Mohamed Buba Mawa the present chairman and the CEO of the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency. For now, the killing of Nigerians by various criminal elements goes unabated, and the new government has yet to show any seriousness in tackling the problem beyond the whole trick, according to the news we have this morning. In the other hand, though, we're going to see this Obonga news, because uh, Mazin Namdekano is in detention, and they will have a self-acclaimed prime minister. Look at what he says. Allow independent doctors to treat Namdekano Epa as DSS. A popular Biafra agitator, separatist Simon Ekberima, has asked the Department of State Security Service, DSS, to, re re to readmit the two doctors earlier denied access to seeing Namdekano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Recall that last week, the DSS denied an independent medical team brought by Kano's family members and close associates. The DSS action comes after each medical unit cleared two doctors who intended to treat Nam the Kano's deteriorating ear condition. Regarding the development, Ekpa, a Finland lawyer and the Prime Minister of the Afghan Republic in exile, in a statement through his official Twitter handle, called on DSS to permit the doctor to attend to Mazi Nam the Kano. He condemned the action by some expert IPOP members to start the process. Having gone through what uh, the expert criminals in IPOP are writing against at a lawyer Jimako and Mazin Nam the Kano siblings, there is a need to clarify that the two doctors' vi uh, visitation for which by a lawyer Jimako wrote the letter of introduction was part of the broader efforts aimed at arranging the ear surgery and other urgent medical care for Oyendu Mazin Nam the Kano by doctors chosen by Mazinam Dekano himself. Again, it was Ojendu that chose those doctors, 
not a Jimako, not Kanonta or fine boy. And this is not the first time, sometime in August last year, another doctor determined by, by Onyendu was also denied visitation at the last minute. Still, Barista Ejimako persisted by getting the doctor to write an independent medical opinion, a master stroke. All these are in the public domain, and China Sangoru, Chike Dozium, and Co. know this. They are also know that nobody, including the DSS, is arranging surgery for Nyendu to be performed by DSS doctors, and that the DSS does not even have a hospital, not to talk of qualified surgeons. Yet, the spared criminal Chinasa and DOS persist in blackmailing the Ejimako and Kano family with cheap lies that they are arranging for DSS doctors to do surgery on Maze Namde Kano. The two doctors do not go to the DSS to do surgery on Onyendu, but to examine him and come up with the recommendations for the surgery to be done at the hospital chosen by Onyendu and by doctors chosen by him. Anybody who continues to believe this uh, hate campaign and lies against Ejimako and Kano's family must have this uh, has it, have his head examined. It needs to be made clear that the expert US has no right to choose doctors for Onyendu. It's only Onyendu that has that exclusive right to choose whom he wants to attend to him. What does uh, what the US and Barista Ifani Ejofo have done by blocking these two doctors? We now delay the time for getting the surgery done. It is one of the highest sabotage of Onyendu's health. The doctor's recommendation could also be used to demand Onyendu's release for the surgery, depending on the doctor's advice. But these expert criminals, DOS people, and the, uh, and the Jofo have ruined everything. A DSS dungeon is not a hospital or clinic. We therefore demand the DSS to, with immediate effect, admit these doctors and arrange for them to visit Martin Nam the Kano, as they are his choice of doctors and he knows them he wrote, according to Simon Ekberima. It don't happen, no. We're going to see what I see this morning, no. Sirapo sues Mazi Bolame Tunumbu over missing $2.1 billion uh, and uh, 3.1 trillion subsidy payments. <laughs> that is why they run to cut off the sub subsidy, even when the, the time is not yet right, because subsidy is supposed to end. They have already paid or they have already made uh, uh, available for the subsidy payment of this month, this month of June. But they went and cut it off because they want to siphon that money. Don't worry. We are watching. Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has filed a lawsuit against President Bola Tunumbu over missing subsidy payments. The organization is taking a probe of allegations that $2.1 billion and $3.1 uh, trillion naira budgeted and first subsidy payments are unaccounted for. The suit followed the grim allegations documents by the Auditor General of the Federation in 2016 and 2019 annual reports that the public funds are missing. In the suit, number FSC slash L slash CS slash 1107 slash 2023 filed last Friday at the Federal High Court in Lagos. Sirap is seeking an order of mandamus to compare Tunumbu to act. It wants the president to direct the anti-corruption agency to probe subsidy payments made by government since 1999, name and prosecute suspected perpetrators, and recover missing funds. The, the, recover, uh, the recover the proceeds should be used as palliative to address the impact of the subsidy removal on poor Nigerians, the suit demanded. The group said misuse of public monies was a fundamental breach of anti-corruption laws and international obligations, including under the United Convention Against Corruption, to which Nigeria is a party. The Tunubu government has constitutional and international legal obligations to get to the bottom of these allegations and ensure accountability for these serious crimes against the Nigerian people. Sirak added. We have the last year, but not the least, 10th National Assembly. Respect President Tunumbu's choices and as a youth to members elect. Now everyone we will concerned on, everyone will not concerned on. And I will just the chuk chuk mouth they put. What do you know about the House? What do you know about National Assembly? And why must Tunumbu interfere on the issue of the National Assembly? It is not so, it is not constitutional. The National Assembly, the elected members, both the returning and the new ones, they have the right to choose whoever that will lead them. Whoever that will speak, 
in the uh, 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 in the uh, 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 in the choice and, uh, uh, of uh, the 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 the, city, the citizens of the country. Yeah? Not somebody who will go there and become a rubber stamp, uh, either Senate or rubber stamp, a House of Reps, just like uh, we had in the Night Assembly. That everything that has to do with finance, once it crosses there, they will approve it. To the extent of approving a contract, eh, or, appro or approving a, 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 a contract that is written, uh, uh, signing a contract that is written in Chinese language, they don't even know what is written there. They approve it and sign and stamp and say, go ahead. Who translated those documents? Nobody said that in T today. That is the kind of rubber stamp people you want us to choose in this state assembly again. It cannot be so, and this country can never move forward if this is exactly how we want to run this country. Allow the people who are in the House of Reps and Senate to choose who they want to lead them. Ahead of the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly, APEX Igbo Social Cultural Organization and SND Igbo Youth Council worldwide has again urged the members elect to put national interests above all sectional and the personal interests. On the youth spoke through a statement by its national president, Mazi Oku Nabike, on Sunday. He said the government of President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu promises to be ready for good governance and deserve the support of all Nigerians, including members of the National Assembly. Oku noted that uh, the robust and supportive uh, National Assembly, President Tunumbu, would not have um, obstacles on his way towards restoring the nations to the path of growth and development. He said, what should matter to the incoming members of the Senate and the House of Representatives is the general interest of Nigerians. While we are against rubber stamp legislation, we are supportive of handling National Assembly leadership that will work in harmony with the executives. We are aware that the president's choice is Senator Goswil Akpabio for Senate President and targeting about for Speaker of the House of Representatives. We are obeyed that the National Assembly will, uh, will experience robust legis legislative season under their leadership. Even though there is an outcry that the Southeast desires more than having Honorable Benjamin Carlo as Deputy Speaker, we urge our people to remain calm as more things would come. Judging by the voting pattern during the presidential election, we all know that the Southeast didn't do much for the APC. Besides, Ababio is an in-law to Ndigo, and we surely protect our interests. Ah, God have mercy. We are optimistic that the choices President Tunumbo has made for the 10th National Assembly leadership must have been made after much consideration. We therefore appeal to all the members elect to respect the decision of the President Pola Tunumbu in the overall interest of the country as we look forward to a situation where positive bills will be passed and signed by President with the haste, Oku stated. Now, so on the text here, Mo, the same Ababio that you people are, 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 are contesting are, or, or you people are campaigning for, is the same Ababio during his tenure, the uh, 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 Baristo Pony that fainted in the house. He is fainting, you know, he is gone and he is fainting. When he cannot account for how much they spend on that Ababio's nose, he cannot account for it. See, today, nobody talk about that news again. After the fainting, that is the whole lot. The whole issue dies down. That is what they learned now of this present time. Once they have been squandered or looted, the funds that meant for general public, when you hold them, they will tell you they are not either they are sick or their life is paying paying them. One of them who keeps shouting that time, I'm in severe pain, I'm in pain. He's been a uh, probe for 6.9 billion naira. Now they are giving him permission to go abroad and treat himself. Former governor, two time former governor, that could not do anything for his state, that could not do anything for his constituency. Even inside his family home, I think he's supposed to build a hospital there if he cannot do outside. Build it, build it in the government so that every incoming government will come there to treat themselves and their families instead of traveling abroad with our common resources. But yet, they cannot do it. Nigeria, on Adon decay. On Adon decay. And the people like all these, uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, this uh, uh, Anedendibu, Youth Wing, is the one that is uh, 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 helping you people in all this nonsense. How can you tell me and tell me now that Akabio is the choice? Whereby, under his nose, a lot of things happened in NDDC. Anyway, my wonderful people, I don't want to go much. Make sure to do what? Subscribe, like, share, and also comment on any of my content. Have a nice day, my people. At the coming, we're going to see the menu. One and only, we'll put a daily talk.
Bye for now. Que me sea no.